Welcome to the coming apocalypse. Evangelist and pastor Paul Bagley will take you on a journey into the end times prophecy. He'll examine current world events and explain how they relate to the end times. For decades, Pastor Bagley has provided people all over the world with an understanding of today's world events from a biblical perspective. Now here's your host, Pastor Paul Bagley. Welcome to the coming apocalypse. This 30 minutes is a mandate. We've never been, the world's never been this tense before. Entire world, whether you're talking Asia, the Middle East, Europe, or even here in the United States, the weapons of our warfare has turned to a possibility of a catastrophic conclusion to the matter. My question is to you, we don't know the day nor the hour the Lord's coming, nor do we know exactly what's going to happen in the times we live in. But one thing is for sure, if you get your heart right with God, if you're walking in the love of Jesus Christ, you have no weapon formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue that would rise against you, you shall condemn in judgment. So set back. Get on the phone. Tell somebody to get over here. 30 minutes, the power of wars and rumors of wars. I'll be right back. Available from Paul Begley, his CD, Wayfaring Stranger. I'm just a poor wayfaring stranger traveling through this will be Wayfaring Stranger includes the title cut plus 11 other songs. No Order yours by visiting paulbegleyprophecy.com today. Are you serious? Are you serious? Well, let me just say quickly, wars and rumors of wars. Jesus said this would be one of the major end time signs that you knew you were living in the last days. But let's go all the way back. When did this battle begin in the first place? When the serpent deceived Eve, when she shared this with her husband, Adam, when God sent in Genesis 3.15, I'll put enmity between your seed and the seed of the woman, the serpent's seed, the battle over humanity, the corruption of our flesh, the wickedness, man's hearts being on evil continually, so bad that God said, my spirit will not always strive with man. I'm going to wipe man off the face of the earth. But then Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And God said, okay, Noah, build an ark for you and your wife, your three sons and their wives, and take the animals into the ark. For, for the flesh of humanity has been corrupted. Okay, so we get past the flood. Now we move a little further. We know there's been battles throughout time and history. Wars have always been. But Jesus specifically is asked a question in Matthew 24. Let's read it. In Matthew 24, Jesus is asked the question, what shall be the sign of your coming and the end of the world? His answer in verse 4, Matthew 24, 4. And Jesus answered and said, take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name saying, I am Christ and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Then he goes on further. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And what's the result of wars? Well, there will be famines, pestilences, plagues, diseases. Earthquakes will then break out apocalyptically in different places. But he warns all of these are just the beginning of sorrow. We're living in a world today that I've never, we've never seen before. Oh, I know World War I was horrible. And we know World War II was dreadful. And the Holocaust, and the murdering, and the anguish, and the map had to be redrawn, and the United Nations was formed to bring world peace that never again will the world ever get in a condition to where we ever have to worry about another global war. But here we are in a world today that is literally uh, being pulled apart at the very seams. Whether you're talking Asia and North Korea and the threats, of course, that constantly come out from the, its leader. And now other players, China advancing, building islands in the South China Sea, taking more ground. 
angering the Philippines, Vietnam, and uh, other nations that say that they're taking their waters. In North Korea's Kim Jong-un threatening almost every other day to annihilate the United States of America, firing missiles in the direction of Japan to the point they're falling in their waters just off their coast. And while this goes on, we know that Russia moves troops, tanks, troops all along the border of North Korea with battleships throughout the Black Sea, throughout the Mediterranean Sea, now even in the South China Sea, the Pacific Ocean becoming a, literally a boiling pot of tension rising on every side. New presidents in position, afraid to be looked at as weak, weapons of mass destruction that could annihilate entire civilizations. And we're just talking the Pacific. We're just talking Asia. Look at the Middle East madness that's going on. Wars and rumors of wars. I can't even tell you now. The last time I counted, there were 17 different armies in Syria. And all of them are now, you've got the Russians and the Iranians and Al-Qaeda and Al-Nusa and, Al and ISIS. You have the United States. You have the French, the British, the Chinese. You have uh, uh, the, the Iranians. And you have Assad and Syrians and all of the madness going on. And then the Houthi rebels that have rose up, backed by the Iranians, taking out the government of Yemen and fighting against the Saudi Arabians. We can see all these things happening, and the tension is building there. And so you start to say, which is the worst? But then there's Europe, a ticking time bomb, with the migrant crisis putting every nation in that European Union on edge, in jeopardy. The taxes, they can't pay the taxes, they're so high. Trying to fund the influx of migrants from a war they're fleeing from the Middle East. And then finding out many of those that come are not really refugees, but are sleeper cells that are sent to destroy the very culture of the Judeo-Christian beliefs of the Europeans. It's a strategic plan that's spilling over across the world. And while that's going on, the insecurities of the dollar and of the, of the British pound, of the euro, and, uh, and other currencies that are around the globe. And mankind's greed continues. And our technological advancement seemingly taking us to the brink of Armageddon. And what did Jesus say would happen? There would be wars. There would be rumors of wars. But be not troubled. What? <laughs> Time out! Don't, don't be troubled. Jesus said this words to us in St. John 14. He said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God? Believe also in me. For in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. But I'm going to go and prepare a place for you, and if I go, I'm going to come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Now, realizing that the world is vulnerable, and that there's now weapons that are even being created that we haven't even heard of. What one called the, the rod of God, laser beams from satellites from space. I mean, we're, we're past the nukes. We're talking hydrogen nukes. We're past that. We're talking EMPs, electromagnetic pulses that could fry every component, could fry everything. Your car wouldn't start. The power grids would go off. Your refrigerator wouldn't work. Your, your phones are dead. Your computers are useless. Your television won't turn on. No communications. No way to get running water. No power. No heat. Chaos in the streets. This weapon uh, is now available. The major nations of the world possessing the power to cripple people's existence in society. Now, this is what we mean by wars and rumors of wars. Cyber attacks. Raiding people's banks, attacking infrastructures. This is what we're talking about. When men get to the point that they don't care anymore, when madmen are playing with green buttons, thinking they're video games, and when people are threatening annihilation of full civilizations, this is what Jesus meant would happen. Wars and rumors of wars. Pastor Begley, please tell me there's hope. There is. There is hope. As a matter of fact, Every time that mankind's got to the brink, to where there was nowhere else left to turn, God always made a way. Now, Israel is the center of all of it. And don't forget Venezuela and South America right now. 
their experiment in socialism has completely destroyed them. They, the government just seized General Motors not long ago, and we hear that they've taken over the food processing. They've taken over the farms. The shelves are empty because the government can't provide enough food for the people. Socialism, super socialism, communism has never worked in history. It has never worked. Venezuela should have known this. When Hugo Chavez, and uh, when he started this process, and when Mandura tried to follow through, all they had to do was look and see the experiment that the, the Castro brothers did in Cuba, how it never works. And because of these things, it creates people's minds to think we must overthrow. There's revolutions, rebellions rising up in the last days. Nations would rise against nations. I've never seen such saber rattling in my life. Threatening nuclear war between leaders of countries. The United States is threatened every day. And, uh, and in turn, we must pray for the president, his family, pray for the vice president, his family, pray for the members of Congress, your governors. You, the Bible tells us to pray for those that are in authority. That what a complex world. I would not want to be sitting at the Oval Office right now with the information coming from every direction of threats and potential catastrophes and alarming possibilities of destruction of this, own, of this nation and, and our assets around the world. No, this is what Jesus meant, war and rumors of war. I think sometimes the President of the United States probably paces in the hallway late at night in the, in the White House with all the information he receives, thinking, dear God, what do I do? What a lonely position to be in. And I say to you, people of the world have to understand that the, Jesus said these words, in the world you'll have trouble, but in me you'll have peace. And the peace I give you is not the peace that the world giveth. Jesus said, for the peace I give unto you is a peace that passes all understanding. You can be in the middle of a total state of chaos all around you. You're in the world, but you're not of the world. You're in the kingdom of God. You're in, the, you're in the kingdom blessing. And no matter what's going on around you, you must stay focused on the fact that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. When we come back from the break in a moment, we're going to go to the book of Ezekiel. We're going to take a look at the great battle of Gog and Magog and the countries that are going to be involved in it and show you just exactly how close we are to that battle. I'll be right back in just a moment. Folks, let me tell you something. I have a book I really recommend you should get. You go to my website at www.paulbegleyprophecy.com. I have a book entitled The Zombie Apocalypse. Now, it has to do with actual, 35 actual accounts of demonic possession and manifestations that uh, is very troubling but will help you understand how demon spirits actually work in these last days. I highly recommend you get it also for your teens and college students to help explain to them the pitfalls to not fall into these uh, sorcery or witchcraft seances, Ouija boards, or some video games that could alter the mind and the soul of your child. Again, this book, it's only at my website at www.paulbegleyprophecy.com. There you'll find it on the products page. It'll be a blessing to you, insightful, and you'll bless the ministry. All right, let's take a look at some of the things the Bible says. When you talk about wars and rumors of wars, you know, we hear about Armageddon, but also Gog and Magog. And let's go to the scripture. If you go to Ezekiel 38, the Bible tells us in these first four or five verses, it says, and the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshech and Tobal, and prophesy against him. And say, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshech and Tobal, and I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws, and I will bring thee forth and all thy army horses and horsemen, and all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company 
with bucklers and shields and all of them handling swords, Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya with them, and all them with shield and helmet, Gomer and all of his bands, and the house of Tagarma of the north quarters, and all of his bands, and many pe people with thee. Now, there's five major nations mentioned here, but there's also others. Obviously, you're dealing with Persia, which is Iran, Ethiopia, we know who they are, Libya, we know who they are, Gog and Magog, uh, that's debatable by some folks, but Gomer is southern Russia, it's a, it's a band, it's a group out of Russia, and Tagarma is a group out of Turkey from the North Quarters. So we know those are the five countries, but they're not the only five, okay? And many people with thee. Now, part of this, if you look at ISIS, you know that al-Baghdadi has declared himself the caliph, and so ISIS is spreading uh, in, into uh, many different nations that are involved in the Middle East. We know that Syria, there's prophecy that tells you that the Assyrians would be hit hard, and the Egyptians would, God said he would smite Egypt, and then he would heal it. And he even talks about in Isaiah 19 how that Syria, Egypt, and Israel would form an alliance, and there'd be a highway from Egypt, from Cairo to Damascus, okay, with Israel participating in this path and everybody getting along. So even though you hear of wars and rumors of wars, realize something, that won't bring the end of time. The wars and rumors of wars don't bring the end. They're just a symptom of the sin and the evil that lurks in men's hearts. Christ will come. God will end this thing. You know, David Wilkerson does a tremendous prophecy. You can watch it on YouTube. In 1973, he prophesies of the condition of the church world in the end times. The Lord showed him 41 things, and he, he starts rattling them off. It takes him 52 minutes. It's one of the most remarkable uh, videos you can ever listen to. And when I went back, and at the time, you have to realize the time frame, 1973. He starts telling you stuff that's going to happen, and people were shocked. Some people were booing him in the audience as if to say, you know, you're crazy. That will never happen. Folks, I'm here to tell you 40 of the 41 things he said have already come to pass. Only one hasn't, and that was a cosmic storm he saw in the heavens like the heavens were on fire and just before the coming of Jesus Christ. Well, now we know that there's the potential of that very thing, what's called chargeable particles that are in space, that are falling to the earth, increasing. The lightning bolts are becoming thunderbolts. The extreme weather conditions have shifted. The atmosphere around the earth is weakened. The uh, magnetosphere has become much less ability as a shield to protect us from UV rays or radiation. So even though we know wars and rumors of wars are coming, Israel is going to be attacked by in this battle. They will rise up and come against Israel. So keep a close eye on what's going on with Jerusalem and Israel and the building of the third temple and the things that are taking place over the next period of time. Shortly, you will see a, some kind of a covenant with many. Is that covenant with many uh, include the building of the temple in Jerusalem? Maybe. Does it include some kind of coalition to go to war against Israel? Maybe. And if you read Zechariah chapter 12, the Bible tells you that Jerusalem will become this cup of trembling and a burdensome stone into all people. All that burden themselves with it will be broken into pieces though all the nations of the world should come against it. Yet the Lord said in the same chapter in Ze Zechariah 12, 8, for the Lord seeketh to destroy all nations that come against Israel. And he even said in Zechariah 2, verse 8, you know, that you don't want to touch the apple of God's eye. So we're in a situation where there's no doubt about it. The United Nations was formed to bring world peace. They can't do it. The Antichrist will rise up, I believe, probably within the United Nations, or at least um, have enough power, he controls it, and he'll try to bring world peace. And people will be so desperate for world peace that they will grab what he's got to say. And they'll say, you know what? We, we, let's go with what he's saying. 
and he comes in with flatteries, as it says in the book of Daniel. So the wars and rumors of wars are only inching you closer to the rise of the beast and the Antichrist himself. Now, there are certain markers that's in the Bible that have to take place, including, as Jesus said, in Matthew 24, he names all the things that's got to happen, and then he says, but when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, whosoever readeth, let him understand. In other words, when you see the Antichrist walk into the temple of God before the worshipers of God and declare that he is God, the son of perdition, the wicked one, Satan, homo satanus, half man, half devil, with the power of lying signs and wonders and a false prophet that is supporting every move he makes. You see, wars and rumors of wars are bringing us even closer to the very moment when the world will beg for peace and Lucifer will provide the remedy. It won't be Jesus Christ. He won't promote Christ. I'll be preaching it. You'll be shouting it. Folks will be trying to share the good news of Jesus Christ, but the world will embrace a globalist leader who will promise peace, but the Bible says when they say peace and safety, then come a sudden destruction. It'll be short-lived, according to the Bible, 42 months. 42 months of peace and then sudden destruction. So how close are we, Pastor Begley? Well, the more wars and rumors of wars you hear, and you will, and they will get more intense, and there will be conflicts, and there will be attacks, and there will be catastrophic, horrific events. You know, when I saw these little children that were being killed through chemical weapons that's being used in Syria, I mean, when you, when you see the actual results of men that have lost their minds to want to, who, who have no regard for human life, no, no, no conscience, it, they're, they're like a uh, brute beast, it says in the book of Jude. Folks, this is a world, I don't want to hang on to this world. I'm looking for a better one. I'm looking for, you know, uh, I'm looking for a home uh, in the sky. I'm looking for a better way, a, a whole different life. I'm going to live this world. I love my family. I love everyone I meet. I want to live to be 120 if I could. But if Jesus comes first, I'm ready to go. But there's a better world. And so don't be troubled. Don't be discouraged. Don't lose faith. Don't give up. Don't throw your hands up and say, what's the use? No, quite the contrary. Push harder. Run this race with patience as if only one obtains the prize. You see what I'm saying? Keep going. It isn't he that starts the race, but he that finishes that obtains the prize. Be a good soldier. Walk in the, in the joy of the Lord. Have power in your prayer life. You know, lean not to your own understanding. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge the Lord. He will direct your path. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. It's great when, isn't it awesome? It's awesome when God gives you direction. When you, it's, it's frustrating when you're like, I don't know what to do. But boy, it's good whenever you get the answer. When you get clear direction from the Lord. It's joy knowing. See, then your faith kicks in and you say, okay, I got a word from God. This is exactly what I'm supposed to do. Then even when things rise up and seem to try to knock you down, you just, you just keep your eye on the goal. You just keep right on going. And you know God's going to part the waters. He's going to calm the troubled waters. Uh, you know, he's going he's to bring, uh, the rainbow is coming after the rain. Just hang in there. The winds will subside. Even when they were on the boat and the waves were boisterous and the disciples thought they were going to perish, Jesus said, oh, you have little faith, peace, be still. And the sea and the waves and the wind obeyed him. Are you saved? Have, have you given your life to Christ? I'm going to say right now, wars, rumors of wars, they're going to get worse. I'm not going to throw you out a pie in the sky. I'm not going to give you some cotton candy Christianity right here. I'm going to tell you the truth. Wars and rumors of wars are going to get worse, but Christ is coming soon. I'll be right back in just a moment. A brand new book I've just finished called Reflections from the Land of the Prophets. 
This book is filled with beautiful pictures, a pictorial, if you will, of the Holy Land, and some definite great insight to the prophets that once spoke mightily in the times leading us up to the present. It's a prophetic word, a reflection of what God has spoken, not only historically from the past, but for the future. Go to my website. It's available now. All right, all right. I know it sounds like Paul. I mean, you're talking Armageddon. You're talking Gog and Magog. You're talking Kim Jong-un. You know, I'm talking Jesus Christ. I'm telling you right now. There is... My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. I'm telling you right now, call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Live every day in the victory. Walk in the joy of the Lord. Paul, but the world's falling apart. The world is in trouble. But in you, Jesus said, I'll give you peace. And that peace comes only from the Lord. And you maybe have folks you know that need Jesus. I, I would encourage you to get them to watch these broadcasts. I would encourage you to talk to them uh, and say, look, let's get real. Uh, you know, the news will depress you. You need to also know the truth. The news tells you the situation, but have no remedy, no hope, and just attack and trash each other. It's just, it's a joke. But the, the truth tells you this is what's going to happen, and here's the answer, Christ. Christ is the answer. I'd like to pray with you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, there are folks watching, Lord, that want to be saved. There are people listening out there, Lord, that need you. All over the world, Lord, there are folks that are in trouble. They hunger and they thirst after righteousness. You said they shall be filled. You told us, Lord, that you would never leave us nor forsake us. You won't leave us in the sixth trouble nor forsake us in the seven. You'll go with us all the way even to the end of the world. And so, Lord, I thank you. Would you comfort my brothers and sisters in Christ out there? We haven't got the spirit of fear. You said you haven't given us the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. And you also said to, for us to pray that be, we be worthy to escape the hour of temptation that's coming upon the world. You also told us, Lord, that you'd stick closer than a brother, and you'd be with us in all of the different trials and tribulations and problems. So right now, in the name of Jesus, I pray peace upon every home and every person. Help those that aren't saved to give their life to you. We ask in Jesus' name, amen.